Dogs are known as man's best friend, but in many ways the honor should have gone to horses. They've been domesticated for thousands of years and were integral to the development of society before the Industrial Revolution. Even to this day, horses are used around the world for transport, for racing, as pets, and for work around farms. But while you may be familiar with the main breeds, there are more than 400 worldwide. And in this video, we'll be looking at the top 15 beautiful and rare horse breeds. Number 15. The Nabstrapper The amazingly named Nabstrapper is a breed of horse that originated in Denmark. Typically growing to around 5.5 feet tall, they have incredibly unusual coats, which are usually white with black spots, or a variation of that. Their coloration comes from a genetic mutation called the leopard complex that gives them their spotty appearance, almost like you'd expect from a Dalmatian dog, and definitely makes them one of the most visually stunning breeds of horse in the world. The first records of a Nabstrapa date back to 1812, when a chestnut mare who had a leopard complex markings was bred with a solid colored stallion, and this just so happened to result in a colt that had some of the most defined spotted markings that had ever been seen at the time. The mare and the young horse were then bred with a number of other horses, and the genetic basis for their appearance was spread and established so that the Nabstrapa became a breed in its own right. There was a time when the Nabstruppers were incredibly popular, particularly throughout Northern Europe. It's not clear though whether any purebreds still exist, because they've been crossed so many times with other breeds. And while they aren't particularly useful as work horses, they are great for dressage and show jumping, as well as for general riding. Number 14. Norwegian Fjord Horse Originating in the mountains of western Norway, the Norwegian Fjord Horse is a breed of light draft horse. It's one of the oldest breeds in the world, with their ancestors thought to have been domesticated around 4,000 years ago. And because of their adaptability to the region, they've been criticized for working on farms for hundreds of years. While they're stocky and powerful like draft horses, they're actually relatively small, growing to a height of up to 5 feet. Don't let the size fool you though, because they're more than capable of carrying an adult human, and can pull heavy loads without any problems. They naturally grow long, thick, and heavy manes, but these are traditionally clipped in style to help show off the defined shape of the breed's neck. Norwegian Fjord horses are always a dun color, in other words, they're somewhere between a tan and gold, and often have spotted markings. It's their ability to keep their footing in mountainous terrain that's made them so useful, and they continue to be used to haul loads across the region where even vehicles would struggle to do the job. They're also known for their extremely friendly temperament, and as a result are commonly used as sports horses, competition horses, for tourist transport, and in riding schools where they're often the first horses children will encounter and ride. Number 13. Frisian Appaloosa Crossbreed Frisian horses were first bred in the Netherlands as a draft breed useful across industry. But while pure breeds still remain, it's also become a popular breed to cross with others, particularly in America. One of the most popular blends is the cross between a Frisian and an Appaloosa. Appaloosas are one of the most popular breeds in the US, with a bloodline that has its origins in Spain, and are known for their leopard spots and range of different colors. When you cross the two together, what you get is a horse that's as powerful and as useful as a Frisian, as well as their calm temperament, long manes, and feathering, but one that takes on the more striking visual characteristics of an Appaloosa, with some of the most unique and beautiful colors and markings of any breed. Ideally suited for dressage, eventing, and driving, they're also perfect as family horses and ones to learn to ride. And as such, they're one of the most highly sought after and crossbred of all. They aren't particularly easy to come across though, so whenever one is available to buy, there's always a considerable interest. Number 12. Akalteke Known for their speed and endurance, the Akalteke is a breed that comes from Turkmenistan. It's believed that they are the descendants of an ancient breed called the Turkoman horse, and after a program of selective breeding to enhance desirable traits, the first Akalteke, as they are today, was born several thousand years ago. Normally growing to around five and a half feet tall, they are stunning horses, which often have a golden color. They have extremely defined heads with long ears and extremely muscular bodies. Because they were bred to survive in the harsh Turkmeni environment, where there's little food or water for them, the Akalteke is one of the highest levels of endurance of any breed. In one example, Turkmen riders were able to travel the 2,500 miles between Ashgabat and Moscow in just 84 days in 1935, and this journey included three days through a desert where there was no water at all. 
Also popular as show jumpers because of the precision of their movements and their grace, Akaltekes almost went extinct while Turkmenistan became part of the Soviet Union because during a severe lack of food, many were slaughtered for their meat. At that time, it's thought only 1,250 of them survived, and they've been slowly regaining their numbers ever since. As a crucial part of Turkmen life for hundreds if not thousands of years, they're often given as diplomatic gifts by the government. Number 11. Andalusian Often known as the pure Spanish horse, the Andalusian originates from the Iberian Peninsula in Spain where they first emerged during the 15th century. They are the descendants of the horse breeds that have been in the region for thousands of years and have changed very little in the past 600 years due to rigorous breeding and the notion that there are no improvements to be made. Historically, they were used as war horses and would be given by Spanish kings to the leaders of other countries as means of diplomacy. Virtually every European monarch had an Andalusian horse in the 16th and 17th centuries, and they have become renowned for their athleticism and perfect appearance. Unfortunately, during the 1800s, the numbers of Andalusian horses dramatically fell as a result of the spread of disease, their use in wars, and crossbreeding, and there was a time when it was feared they would be lost altogether. Strict rules were introduced to prevent them from being exported from Spain, laws that remained in effect until the 1960s, and the effort appears to have worked. Currently, there are almost 200,000 of them registered worldwide, which means they are now surely here to stay. Number 10. Mawari The Indian Mawari horse is an extremely rare breed, with only a few thousand purebred individuals believed to exist in the world. They come from the Marwar region of the country, where they became the horse of choice for riding and traveling long distances. Growing to around 5 feet tall, they are believed to descend from the war horses that were commonplace across Asia and first developed their unique characteristics during the 12th century. They can be any color and have particularly unusual ears that can rotate 180 degrees. They have long backs and slender legs, and those with hair whorls along their necks are considered by locals to be particularly lucky. The breed is normally used as a show horse, but there were some known as Nechni, which were revered more than the rest. That's because they were regarded as the ones that were born to dance, so were dressed in bells, jewels, and ornate coats, and performed complex dance moves and celebrations. While this strain is now extinct, some Mawaris show an ability in performance, so particularly in rural areas, the tradition continues to this day. They're also often used for playing polo, and can be crossbred with thoroughbreds to produce a horse that's a little larger and is more versatile for other uses. They remain closely related to other breeds from the region, and after almost being bred out of existence in the early 20th century, have made somewhat of a comeback in recent years. Number 9. Exmoor if you visit the large area of Moorland in the southwest of England, the chances are you'll see an Exmoor pony. It's a breed that's native to Britain, and while many of them are domesticated, there are still herds that roam free across the region. There's evidence to suggest that this is one of the longest-lasting breeds. Some believe they've been purebred ever since the Ice Age, and while this hasn't been proven for certain, they definitely were used by the Romans as early as 400 BC. Growing to around 4 or 5 feet tall, they are a dark bay or brown color and are surprisingly strong and resilient for their height. Unfortunately, despite the breed's longevity, they are now considered at serious risk for extinction, and this is all because of human activity. Population numbers have historically always been strong, but this changed during the Second World War. The ponies were used as target practice for troops and also hunted for their meat, which caused a sharp decline. Only 50 Exmoor ponies are known to have survived the war, and efforts have been made ever since to try to preserve them. As recently as 2010, they were believed to be at most 800 individuals around the world, and while that number continued to increase since then, there's still concern that if there aren't enough being kept in breeding pairs, that they could become extinct within several decades. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Falabella Pony the unusual-looking Falabella Pony is a small horse that's native to Argentina. They grow to a height of around 3 to 4 feet, which makes them one of the smallest horse breeds anywhere in the world. Horses were introduced to the continent by the Spanish, so the Falabellas count Andalusians and other Spanish bloodlines as their ancestors. But it was the efforts of Patrick Newtall in 1868 that led to the development of this breed. He wanted a small variety of horse, so began to crossbreed various bloodlines, including Shetland ponies, Welsh ponies, and small thoroughbreds. 
He also inbred the horses, which resulted in ever-decreasing size and eventually managed to create a bloodline that was consistently smaller than you'd normally expect. They have the same proportions as larger horses, but just appear to be miniaturized. Nuttall chased after this end result to prove what was possible with selective breeding, and also to create a show pony. That's pretty much all they're useful for, though. Because of their size and relative weakness compared to other breeds, they're mainly now kept as pets or to be put on display, and only small children are able to ride them without risk of injury. Number 7. Gypsy Vanner the Gypsy Vanner, which is also often called the Gypsy Cobb, is a breed that's native to the UK and Ireland. It's a relatively small breed growing to around 5 feet tall and can be a variety of different colors along with the white splashed underbelly that's present on most individuals. Historically, they were the horses of choice for travelers who lived a semi-nomadic lifestyle across the country and would regularly move to find work. The horses were ideal for pulling carts and supplies and became synonymous with traveler lifestyle. Particularly during the 1940s and 50s, the breed was bred to highlight their coloration and the length of their manes, and while they weren't officially recognized as a breed in their own right at the time, they were finally recognized as such in 1996. That was also the first year that Gypsy Vanners began to be exported around the world, and you'll now find them in North America, across Europe, and even as far away as Australia. They're still used to pull carts and caravans, as well as being a popular choice in equestrian sports. As they were specifically bred for their usefulness as well as their aesthetic, they're also one of the easiest species of horse to recognize, mainly because of the shape of their heads and their manes. Number 6. American Cream Draft Several breeds of draft horse have been bred in the U.S. over the past few hundred years, but only one remains, the American Cream Draft. Despite this, they're considered to be a rare breed and can easily be identified because of their creamy color, which is officially called Gold Champagne. This appearance is the result of an interplay between specific genes, whereby their natural chestnut color is affected by what's known as the champagne gene. They also unusually have amber-colored eyes, and unfortunately, because of their genetic makeup, they are particularly susceptible to a condition called junctional epidermolosis bullosa, which is one of the reasons why they aren't bred as often as other breeds. Growing to around 5.5 feet tall, the American Cream Draft originated at the beginning of the 20th century in Iowa, where they were used as workhorses on farms. The first was called Old Granny, and while their existence was threatened during the Depression, the efforts of several farmers to improve their color and physique paid off. As machinery became more and more common on farms, the demand for horses like these reduced, which caused a dramatic reduction in population numbers and are still considered to be at risk today. If you want to see one, though, the best place to go is Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia. It's a living history museum town, and the horses there are known as the most famous of all American cream drafts. As a place that encourages visitors to learn about how life once was, the horses are used in traditional ways, pull carts full of tourists around the town to see the sights. Number 5. American Curly Not to be confused with the Bashkir horse, which looks similar but has a completely different lineage, the American Curly, which confusingly is also known as the Bashkir Curly, is a breed that originated in Nevada in the early 20th century thought to be the result of breeding horses that came from the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. They grow to a similar size as other breeds and aren't known for being particularly strong or capable, but American Curlies have two particular traits that very few others have. The first, as the name suggests, is that they have curly hair, something that occurs because of a unique gene. This can be expressed across their entire bodies or in specific regions, such as their ears. And while it's believed to be a dormant gene, you occasionally get a purebred curly that has no sign of curly hair whatsoever. The other thing that's unique about the American curly, and is a one-of-a-kind with horse breeds, is that they're hypoallergenic. Virtually everyone who has an allergy to horses are able to handle curlies without any problem, and this is because their hair is missing the protein that's thought to trigger difficulties for some people. Curlies can't be trained to run very fast, so are never seen in races, but they're surprisingly good at most other things, so are commonly used as workhorses and show horses, and in dressage and show jumping events. Number 4. Suffolk Punch The Suffolk Punch horse is one of the most beautiful breeds of draft horse, and also easily one of the rarest in the whole world. In fact, they're now so critically endangered that they're at a greater risk of extinction than giant pandas. They originated in the UK in the county of Suffolk and were bred in the early 16th century to be a powerful worker on farms. 
They grow up to 6 feet tall and can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and became invaluable for pulling heavy loads across uneven terrain. They are always chestnut in color, and thanks to a description of one that was written in 1596, they are the oldest breed of horse in the world that's still perfectly recognizable from a historical description today. With such a good temperament and work ethic, the Suffolk Punch horse became a mainstay on farms across Britain, and it was only during the Second World War that their numbers began to diminish. Sadly, a result of needing to send horses to slaughterhouses to provide food for the population. In 1966, only six foals of this breed were registered, and there are now believed to be only around 300 purebreds left. Number 3. Chocolate Silver Dapple Pinto Horse breeds can develop a wide range of different colorations, but occasionally a gene emerges that adds something unique and incredibly rare. While not technically a breed in its own right, one of the rarest horses you'll ever see is a Chocolate Silver Dapple Pinto and this is because a series of genetic flukes have to occur for one to be born. A pinto is the name given to a horse that develops large patches of white hair against a coat of a different color. Pinto patterning is common across a wide variety of different breeds, and can emerge with virtually any typical horse color. This is the most popular patterning across the US, and there are a number of breeders who argue that there should be color breeds to recognize the difference between those with pinto colorations and those with something different, such as the leopard complex. To get a chocolate silver dapple pinto, first you need to have the genes that come together to create a chocolate pinto horse. Then on top of that, you need the silver dapple gene, which results in the dilution of the base color to create a silvery effect. They have silver-colored manes, rings of lighter-colored hair across their bodies, and may also have unusually colored eyes as a result of the gene. Number 2. Black Forest Horse Originating in the Black Forest of Germany, Black Forest Horses are a breed of draft horse that first began to emerge during the 15th century. Their ancestors, the Veldefed, were used for heavy work on farms and in the forest, and the Black Forest breed has continued this tradition. They are powerful, often growing to between 5 and 6 feet tall, and are muscly with powerful necks. They aren't as heavy as they look, though, and the largest weighs no more than half a ton. All Black Forest horses are chestnut colored, which can occasionally be so dark that it appears to be black, but they have much paler manes and tails. By the end of the Second World War, there were 1,200 mares registered in the country that were able to breed, but with the increase of mechanization on farmland in the following years, the demand for a breed like this rapidly fell. By 1977, the numbers of mares had dropped to around 160, and a conservation program began to try to help the numbers recover. At the most recent count in 2017, there were 88 stallions and 1,077 mares, which implies they're beginning to recover, although are still classified as being endangered. They are stunning horses to see up close, and while they are no longer needed for their traditional use, they are now more commonly seen pulling carts for tourists and visitors, for display events, and also, increasingly, as a riding horse. Number 1. The Gypsian of all the different crossbreeds that you'll find around the world, possibly the most beautiful and rare is one known as the Gypsian. They're what you get when you cross a Gypsy Vanner with a Frisian, and have become so popular within some circles that they're now considered to be a breed in their own right by the Frisian Heritage Horse Registry. Both breeds that are bred to create a Gypsian are known for particular aesthetic features, and the result is a horse that takes on the best of both. Gypsians have balanced, noble heads, large, bright eyes, can be a range of different colors, and crucially, have a calm and very friendly temperament. They usually have an incredible, majestic patterning that, on rare occasions, can even take on leopard-like spots. They're extremely easy to train, are great fun to ride, and are described as being the perfect all-around family horse that has a brilliant work ethic and is warm and welcoming to around people. They do, of course, stand out from a crowd, too, so no matter where you ride a Gypsian, you're guaranteed to be noticed. They've only been recognized as a breed relatively recently in 2010, so there aren't many around right now. They're beginning to increase in popularity and are expected to become far more common over the next few decades. Watch our Animals playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge-watch all of our best animal-related videos.